So it has been sunny and warm all day, but you can see that the um, the deer stand out pretty good. I don't think it was a super hot day. So I've seen a lot of people, um, people new to the Mavic 3T, asking about camera setup. So while I've got deer under me, just so you can see what I'm talking about, um, and I'm at about 300 feet. I'm going to show you how I have my camera set up, what you need to do, uh, what you can do, um, optional, if you will. I'm also sitting in the car with the air conditioning, so the reception ain't great. So when you first get your Mavic 3T, you're going to want to know some basic settings um, for when you're doing your searches, you know, and things you want things to make sense to you. So I'm going to show you some real quick things. So if you go to the, the menu on the top right, so the three dots, click that, um, and you scroll down to the three dots. Okay, so go up here, go to the three dots. You're going to see unit settings. So go into that, and you want to adjust everything to where you like it. Now, obviously, for thermal, the main thing is going to be the temperature. Fahrenheit or Celsius, and so I'm in the U.S., and I know Fahrenheit, so that makes more sense to me. So I'm going to keep that there. I'm going to close that. On the thermal menu, um, I'm going to, so in this setting right here, this is your, this is what the, hot, the coolest temp and the hottest temp on screen is. So I'm going to click on that, and you see my palettes come up. That's going to change. You know, for instance, I want white hot, black hot, tint, rainbow, or arctic, hot iron, iron red. Personally, I like tint. It allows me to fly quickly. Um, I can see the red hot spots uh, very easily. Now, you notice, um, right now, there is nothing that is hot underneath me. Okay? So, the next setting I need to adjust is right over here where it says mode okay it says 32 fahrenheit to 932 well obviously i'm looking for in my case deer or humans for search and rescue so i'm not looking for anything over 110 degrees something of that nature so click on mode there's only two settings there's a wide and a narrow so in this case it just changed from One moment. 32 to 932 Fahrenheit down to negative 4 to 302. So if you notice on my screen right here, there's a hot spot there. There's a deer down below us. Okay. And there's a few of them actually. Um, and there were um, very thick pines below us as well. So with that mode setting, and that tent setting, you notice that deer pops out, and he's very obvious. So if I was to change to the white hot, you can still see him there, and let's do black hot. You can see him. But for me, if I want to go fast, I'm generally using tent, because that just, it, it's what I've gotten used to. It's what works with me, and uh, what I can, you know, notice pretty quickly. So there's another Now, another setting, you notice as I, I zoom, I can zoom, I'm zooming on the thermal too. You can change this right here. You can link zoom or not link zoom. So, if you turn on link zoom, when I zoom in the thermal, I'm zooming in the zoom camera. Or when I zoom in the zoom camera, I'm also zooming the thermal. So, if I switch the thermal, I get a larger thermal image, right? And I zoom out here, and it reflects through the zoom camera. Now, some people don't do that. Um, I tend to like that. Um, I'm not saying it's the right way or the wrong way, but it is what it is, and um, you can set it how you want it. The other option is if you click, um, sorry, go back to the thermal. You you see this SBS, a side by side. So if I click that, now I'm going to get an image of the visual camera, in this case the zoom. Yeah, 
go back to that. Um, the zoom camera on the right and the thermal on the left. Now, I don't use that. I did when I first started flying. And you probably want to as well when you first start. And I'll tell you why. So when you first get this thing and you're in the and you're in the thermal, it's real easy to lose situational awareness. And you can see sometimes that ground, it's hard to tell how far away it is, right? Plus the zoom cam or the thermal camera is automatically it starts at two at two times, right? It's not one. So you look closer to the ground than you really are. And so when you switch over to your zoom camera, obviously you're instantly like, oh, wow, I'm a long way up. So when you first start flying, you're going to find that you're a little scared of being heads down in the thermal. And you do need to be aware. You do need to know where you're flying. Every time I fly, when I get up to the altitude I'm going to be searching at, I do one of these. And I get an idea of how high are the power lines? Where are their towers? Where are their cell towers, right? I want to know that I'm not about to hit something when I'm head down. And if you're in rugged terrain, like um, the mountains, obviously you've got to be aware that the ground is going to be get, getting closer to you. And you're going to need to uh, be, as you are moving along, doing your search, you're going to have to be increasing your altitude to follow the ground. Um, so you got to learn to be situ situationally aware, but you also got to kind of get over your initial fears of flying with your head down. So normally when I am flying, I'm just moving along, right? Sorry, I'm losing connection here. Okay. So I'm just flying along, head down, leaving points or whatever, right? And then I'll zoom in, or I'll use the uh, zoom camera to check something out, and I'll see that it's nothing, or see that it's just a deer or whatever, I'll mark it, and I'll keep going. And I generally don't do a 90 degree um, gimbal angle, I'll do um, something in this neighborhood, 80 to, you know, 75, 80. Um, sometimes that helps you look up under the trees, but it also is a reason why you need to ensure that you get ad adequate overlap in your search, um, because you're going to potentially miss things, uh, from this angle, uh, from this, you know, gimbal angle. So you're looking up under the trees going this way from this direction, but then when you're going the other direction, you might need to look up under them from the other direction. So you want to ensure that you got enough overlap. Now in these pines, technically straight down is fine. Because they're short enough, they don't have, you know, a large canopy of coverage. So in short pines, you're probably just fine. Um, I know one of our guys on the Facebook group, uh, he does uh, fawn searches in Austria. And so he's going straight down because he's looking down into deep uh, silage. Another setting you want to check. When you first get your uh, Mavic 3T and you're setting up the camera, just making sure that you got everything set up right, is go over to um, the three bars, these three sliders right here. You can see that. Okay. And click on that. And you want to click on the three dots. And we want to go and make sure that this infrared image. Super resolution. We want to make that sure that is turned on. And that's pretty much it. That's it. So that's going to make sure that your um, super resolution just tries to make the image a little bit cleaner uh, from the thermal aspect. Uh, one other thing, going to on the menu right here where it shows the uh, like a memory card, you're gonna click on that, 
So personally, I set all of these to record. Okay. Um, you've got a current view. I think these are mislabeled, to be honest. You have infrared. Um, you have current view. And then I think one of these, I forget what it says. I'm going to have to look that up. I got some antlers there. Nothing spectacular, but it's good to see antlers. So I think that's probably who I was looking for, right there. <laughs> 